Good evening, everyone. Um, hey. Happy Monday. Happy Monday evening to you on our our final wrap up days of summer. It's August one. Can't believe summer is. Don't like, talk about it. It's not. It's not coming to be <laughs> enjoying every day in Jesus' name. <laughs> We're excited that you're with us tonight. Of course, this is the Expresso Faith Bible Study. Uh, we meet and connect along with God every Monday, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, we'd love for you to, of course, be involved with what we're doing and engage with what we're doing. We're always open to questions or thought-provoking um, issues or thoughts that you may have as we uh, navigate through the Gospels at this point. And um, so if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to shoot us an email at espressofaith at gmail.com. Um, you can also listen to uh, replays of our Bible study on uh, Spreaker.com and just do a search for Espresso Faith and you'll see all of our recorded um, Bible studies. And uh, we believe and agree that they will be a blessing to uh, you and your family just as they have been for um, all of us that have been uh, with this Bible study for some time. So uh, we are at the point where we're, we are nearing or, or closing uh, Chapter 12 of Matthew, and um, I know that there were a few few unanswered things or unresolved things that we needed to kind of touch on before we uh, uh, pull out of Chapter 12 of Matthew, and then maybe we will get into 13 tonight, but we will trust Holy Ghost to do what Holy Ghost does. In Jesus' name, so I'm going to just open up with prayer, and then we'll we'll dig into the word. Heavenly Father, we glorify you and thank you and worship you and honor you. We rejoice, Father, for who you are and and all that you have done and all that you continue to be in and through us and as well as on this earth in this nation. We pray, Father, for all that you have preordained for us to do as it relates to Espresso Faith Bible Study. We yield ourselves, our members, all over to you this evening so that it can be all of you and none of us. We yield, Father, under the inspiration of Holy Ghost, and we actually invite, Father, any gifts of the Spirit, any way that you see fit to move and and minister to the heart's um, of your people, including us as moderators, we glorify you and we thank you in advance, Father, for the manifestation of your presence, for your glory, for your love, for for your embrace, and for being able to trust you, Father, with our lives, with all that we are, that we can lay it on the on the table, Father, and you will continue to minister to our hearts and show us more and more of who you are and more and more of who we are in you, understanding our righteousness, understanding your agape love for us. So we pray, Father, for every person that is listening and also those that may be listening um, to the replay. We pray, Father, that they will hear something tonight that will transform their thinking, that will revolution their lives, that will minister to something that they've had questions about or uh, hear, to hear a word from you tonight, Father. And we thank you, Father, for all the hearts and, and even those that will make a decision to turn back to you tonight as a result of the word going forth with power and authority. We continue to pray for every moderator on the call and all the listeners. We call them blessed in Jesus' name, empowered to prosper everything they put their hands to do, it is blessed. And we speak and say that every step is ordered and preordained of you. We cover each and every individual under the sound of my voice with the blood of Jesus. We say that their families are also covered, their property and everything relates to them is blessed and, and, and covered by the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Father. For life, we thank you, Father, for freedom, the ability to freely worship you in this format, and we trust, Father, that this broadcast and, and these messages will go forth throughout the nations 
to be a blessing to the hearts of, of people, to those that are lost, to those that need a word in due season. We glorify you, we magnify you, and we thank you in advance for all that you will do in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good. Amen. So I'm not sure who's all on the call. Um, Siobhan, I know you had one thing that we, we wanted to circle back around on that was uh, kind of left on the table that we wanted to address. Yes. In, in Chapter 12, we um, did not touch on the unpardonable sin uh-huh. and uh, the so anywhere between 30 and 37 and then the very last portion, 46 through 50, is closing out um, chapter 12. Okay. So, did you have a specific question that came through on the part, unpardonable sin, or um, it was just something that we just didn't touch on? I think it's important for us to discuss it because I think the devil does a bang up job holding people hostage to this. Mm-hmm. They think, whoops, I've, uh, you know, blasphemed the Holy Ghost or I've created the unpardonable sin, so, you know, it, it doesn't matter what I do for the rest of my life because I'm going to go to hell anyway. Like they, they believe that or he's got them bound to that. And um, I just think we need to debunk that or at least peel back the layers on the truth around the unpardonable sin. And um, in my study, and, from, and I, anybody can jump in on this, I really kind of broke it down in a different kind of way. I said, for Jesus to say... I'm going to go back to the words. He said, first of all, he who is not with me, and basically I'm reading out of Amplified, he says, once and for all. So there is a resolve. I'm using one of Darnisha's words. You have resolved to be with Jesus. Uh-huh. You know, if you're not with this me, is, you're this against is verse, me. Verse 30, right? First, verse 30, I apologize. Okay. Yep, verse uh-huh. 30. So Jesus is speaking. Then he says, you know, if, uh, and he who is not uh unvocably gather with me, scatters. I think I butchered that word. And it says, therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy, every evil, abusive, injurious speaking or indignity against sacred things will be forgiven people, but blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. And he says, whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, so he says, hey, you can speak a word against me and you'll be forgiven. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit by attributing the miracles done by me, to Satan will not be forgiven either in this age or to the age to come. And this comes right off the heels of the Pharisees accusing him of um, working with, like doing the work of uh, Beelzebub in verse 24. Like he cast out a demon out of a man that was blind and mute, and he said, hey, they, were, they accused him of work, uh, working in operation with Satan. And he said, hold up, hold up, and he rebuked them on the spot. But I just wanted to kind of bring that piece out and um, hear what you guys had to say about it because the word, it's very interesting. You can quench the Holy Ghost because the word of God talks about that in First Thessalonians 5.19. You can resist the Holy Ghost. You can grieve the Holy Ghost. Ephesians 4 says that. You can quiet the Holy Ghost. Um, it even talked about insulting, but it says here, blaspheming the Holy Ghost is, is unforgivable. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to I define blasphemy, and it actually is a legal term, like a charge against um, something. And, and it's a slanderous position against a good name, against the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. So you are a deliberate, legal witness attributing the works that are in operation to the mm-hmm. devil. And the more I kept looking at this, bla- being blasphemous is a position of the heart. Mm-hmm. It's, where, it's not about some flippant, you know, I'm mimicking what somebody else said and, you know, curse the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah, I'm, that's what my parents felt. I'm feeling that way too. No, that's not blaspheming the Holy Ghost. That's not, that's not, it's not out of ignorance. And you can, we can go over to 1 Timothy 1, 12 through 13 too because Paul deals with that piece. It's not out of ignorant. But if you are coming from a legal witness deliberate, there's a deliberate position of the heart that you are attributing what the works of Christ 
or blaspheming the Holy Ghost, this right here is, is, is unforgivable. And, you know, I know that in previous teaching um, that I've been a part of, it, it was always referenced, if you want forgiveness, and want to be reconciled back to God, that's a pretty good indicator that you haven't committed the unpardonable sin. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like a good base to start there. But I'll let someone else speak on it. Yeah, I I think I was um, looking at it in the same, along the same lines, like you're making a a conscious decision um, to just say, you know, the Holy Ghost is not real or whatever it is that it may be. But it, I think it, I agree that it is something deliberate on purpose. I mean, I have had people that have had experience, you know, you know, with Holy Ghost, Bible ed- evidence of speaking in tongues, and and have literally said it's not real, that have reverted back and said it's not, it's not of God and, you know, based on whatever mm-hmm. teaching that they have been exposed to. And I I don't know how after you've experienced that that level of intimacy intimacy with God, how you can just go back, how can how you can just say that it's non-existent, um, and I, I think that that it's along those lines as well. Even for a person that has had had an experience with Holy Ghost or had an experience with a you know a lifestyle of the Bible evidence of speaking in tongues, and then saying no. Is not real because to me it's so intimate, it's so personal. Um, but I would say that it's along those lines as well, where you are making a on purpose conscious decision to say this don't work or this is not real for whatever. You know, it's it pretty, it's interesting what you just said, Darnesia, because you know I, I personally question people's quote encounter with Jesus when they can taste and see and then back away from it. You know what I mean? Like anyone who really, really, really has experienced Jesus, there's no, like, coming back off of that. Like you, you understand what I mean? I just, Mm -hmm. I I understand that the devil does a deception work, Mm -hmm. and he'll, like, introduce something in the midst of that or, or come to test what you say you believe. But I just really, for you to just completely walk away from yeah. the things of God, I just I am I have a challenge wrapping my mind around that piece. Yeah. Well, I have a question. I, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hey, yeah. Go ahead. Hi, Sherry. So I have a question. Hey, how are you guys? Doing? <laughs> hey there. So, so do you think any element of this is left to the this is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? This is unforgivable, but Jesus is still walking the earth, and he has not fulfilled, you know, fulfilled the prophecy yet. He hasn't died so that grace can come. So do you think any part of this is being stated as this is current state, not future state? Hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Maybe while he was walking the earth, there was no way that he could, you know, while I'm on this earth and you start going off on the Holy Spirit, basically you you ain't going to be forgiven. But, you know, under grace, is, is it, does, the, does, the atmos- does this condition change under grace, or is this is just, this is it, this is the principle? I, Sherry, that's an awesome question because, mm-hmm. you know, Remember I referenced First Timothy 1, 12 through 13? I'm going to read it real fast because this is Paul speaking, and he says, And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, verse 13, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. I still believe it goes back to what I was saying around the position of the heart. And he said that I was able to obtain mercy, even though I did these things, because I was ignorant in the unbelief. You understand what I mean? It's people who, if you're, it goes back to that legal part of being deliberately 
slanderous against the Holy Ghost. You see it in full operation, but your heart has been waxed completely dark and cold that you'll contribute that, what you've seen, to the devil. That's, so this, I mean, so I don't know anybody who's done something so do like with, that, but so this I'm sorry, what was that? To do with, so this has more so to do with you have complete and utter understanding of what you're doing when you're doing yep. it. Yep. Deliberate. Okay, that was yeah. the key word exchange in there. Deliberate. Just like you're deliberate in receiving Jesus Christ. I like the parallel that he gave in verse 30. He says, either you with me or you against me. Either, either you gathering or you scattering. Which one? It ain't no on the fence with me. He talks about that. I think it's in Revelation 3, that lukewarm. There is no gray. You either hot or you cold. You're not in the middle. You're not hemming and hawing with me. Which one is it? And, and so there's a deliberate decision that you're making for Jesus, and there's a deliberate decision that you're making against him and what he's doing. And I think that that could tie into, you know, lifestyle choices as well. You know, people mm-hmm. people get caught up and say, oh, I sinned and, you know, I can never be forgiven. And, and we know that that is, that is not the truth. But I think that there's a distinction when you're making, when you have a lifestyle of sin. So you're, mm-hmm. you're making a, a decision to live or do a certain thing a certain way when when you know that that's not necessarily the way um, that God intended. So it's almost like, to me, I kind of, I was trying to look at it some other way to kind of look at it from a different angle, but I, I was, I think that might, you know, help to shed some light on it where, you know, even as a believer, I may, I may miss it and I will, <laughs> I do miss it. But mm-hmm. it's different if I'm just making, you know, having a, a lifestyle of sin. Or, for example, you you have a single woman that that has made a decision and said, yeah, I will never sleep with a married man. And she does it not knowing that a man is married. Then when she has awareness and knowledge that this man is married, then she is just, just adulterous. That's just adultery. Yeah, but I don't at know the end that, of the day, I don't, huh? she already in trouble because you fought yeah. game, so you <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. You just screwed up anyway. <laughs> yeah, you know, right, right. But but just to keep going into that and saying, Psh, well, I think that mm. that could be something to kind of look at it from that angle. But I think also one of the one other area we can look at is just understanding of righteousness. And, um, you know, even in verse 35, it says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. And, and we're talking about a heart condition. But even if I miss it, if I understand my righteousness in Christ, I understand that good things come even if I miss it once for example, but I know that if I commit those things or I repent or I miss miss God on something, that I can just get right back on the bike and, and keep riding mm-hmm. and and not allow that to just, you know, say that I'm on the outs with Jesus. Right. Or he's mad with me and I can't be reconciled back to him. Those are lies. Yeah. So he, I think- his, if we get a revelation of his forgiveness, it's just we don't forgive ourselves. Right. Yeah. Do you have I mean, any examples? Do you have any examples where a person is aware of truth? And I heard you talk about tasting of the divine, tasting of the things of God, and then mm-hmm. making the conscious decision that I will go opposite, and I will do opposite, and I will represent the opposite side. In the, like like Christ, Christ. Do you have any example of that? You know, I do. I do. Uh, You know what, though? Let me go back for just a moment. Sherry, in verse 32 is also the answer to your question. Jesus says, um, either in this age or in the age to come. So this is not something that was just for him walking on the earth. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
I don't know if she is on mute or not. Yes, I, I but got that. I just wanted to, and I saw that part as well. I just wanted to be sure. I thought it was a great that perspective. That just listening. Of this relates to oh, yeah. the condition of intent, motivation. Uh huh. Nope, I got yeah. you. Um, going back to what Dad said, I remember um, we had a pastor who, and this is many, many years ago, who was speaking of the tongues under, we believe he understood the Holy Ghost, but something entered in, and I don't know all of the situation, but they began to question whether or not tongues were for today. Mm-hmm. So they began to question, you know, this manifestation of Holy Spirit. And they began to teach something contrary to what they were rooted in, what they had been um, trained in, and they were presenting it to the people in, I mean, it was in error. And so in prayer, the Lord told me deception. And I remember having to stand against the spirit of deception and that was that's all that I have. I don't know if this person has, you know, been ministered to since then, but they had to, they were actually taken out of their position and they walked away from the ministry. They walked away from the things of God and they kind of started doing something else. Um, but I don't believe that God is finished with that young man or his family. I don't know what has come. I think, in my opinion, one of the, the most miserable people on the planet are people who, you know, have walked with the Lord and decided they wanted to do something else or they, they, have, they had ears to hear at one time and maybe they, you know, the Word of God says they come out from amongst us. You know, people get into error and they, 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 don't, they, don't have the, they don't have an ear for sound doctrine and truth anymore. And, um, Is there an example in the Bible, though? Um. Do we know of? Do we know of scholars? Is there an example in the Bible that we know of? Well, let's continue to deal with what about, what did you say, Dad? I was going to say, let's continue to deal with that question, but let me throw two other things onto it that, you know, may, may add some light, but uh, they may also help us answer the question. First John 2, 18. Little children's last time, and as you've heard the Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists. Now, Antichrist, it's a conscious decision. I'm going to oppose Christ, an individual who opposes Christ. Whereby we know that the last time, the 19th verse says that they went out from us. For those who made decisions against the Holy Ghost, those who make decisions against Christ, you know, I hear, I hear what you said, Sherry. When you hear that he didn't even mention his mission, when he went back, now the Holy Ghost is here, the comforter, uh, the governor of the church. And so, you know, uh, until I finish my mission, we should have um, open control to the Holy Ghost. But now that I finish my mission, um, I'm thinking it's conflict to think God. Period. And it says, Dad, your connection is really bad. Is it yeah, just it me hearing him bad? Away. No, it sounds far away. Is that better? Is that better? Yeah, it is, is better. better. Yeah, it is better. I, I apologize. So you got this uh, Antichrist I'm talking about, and I'm thinking. Antichrist is opposing the whole plan of God. And so Jesus completed his mission, and, and I heard what you said about why he was here. You know, I'm doing what I'm doing because I have the spirit without measure, and I'm doing what I'm doing because the Father works first, and then I work in turn. I do what he does. But now that I'm gone, the whole plan of God is, is enacted. Everybody's in their places. The Holy Ghost is the governor of the church. Uh, I'm at the right hand of the Father. I'm making intercession. I'm the high priest. And God's plan, the operations of the spirit, everything is in motion. And if you're Antichrist, you're opposing any one of the three or any one of or all of the plan of God. And, and the thing about it is it says they went out from us. So, again, I'm thinking that these are people, like you said, Shabbat, uh, who know. And, um, and, then, and then the other part of it that I would throw in, well, let me see. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out. That they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. And I'm thinking about Carlton Pearson now. You know, not that I'm trying to make a bad name, call the names, but, you know, you preach one way, all of a sudden there's no hell. You know, and like you said, deception. Mm-hmm. And then he comes in. And, and I even think about my own experience. Uh, in 1975, 
you know, seeking Holy Spirit, having people uh, who would minister Holy Spirit to me, but actually ministering it out of a superstitious kind of traditional mythical kind of fashion rather than use the word of God, which indicates we receive the promise of faith. And talking to my former college associates about Holy Ghost, and then they begin to share with me saying, you know, that their, their experience with Holy Ghost and, and with speaking in tongues. Okay, we'll go to that. And one guy flat out said, you know, I did all that. I went that way. I tried all that. We did that in high school. You didn't know what we were doing. We were speaking in tongues in high school. There's nothing to it. And even mm-hmm. close home and family relatives, you know, people were along a certain course, but now you talk to them and it's like, that ain't real, is it? Oh. And so part of me says, you know, the reprobate mind, the antichrist, the conscious decision at some point that I'm opposing this, I'm opposing, you know, God manifesting himself with people and people in these, in these certain ways. And I'm thinking, isn't that where that reprobate mind comes to? That it's people who know who at yeah. some point decide I'm, I'm against it, I'm antichrist. I don't know. Let me throw that out there. So, Sherry, I thought of an example, mm. a biblical example, and we can talk okay. about it. Um, Lucifer. Oh, yeah. But, <laughs> you know what? I'm not even going to say but. That is an excellent example. I was thinking more on the lines of human, because he was never human. But that mm-hmm. is an excellent example. Lucifer, for real, for real, there's no coming back from what he's doing. And yeah. all the angels that fell with him, there's no coming back. There's no grace for you guys. Yeah, I mean, but he, they was, were he under- was up in it, right? <laughs> he had, yeah. he had well, an intimate experience, yeah. You know who else I was thinking about, you guys? I was thinking about Peter. You know how Peter was like, no, nah, Jesus, I ain't going to be cursing you. No, nah, you're going to be cursing <laughs> me for the, quote, the, for the rooster crow or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he said, no, he wasn't going to do that, but he did. Mm-hmm. And I don't even think the Bible does a really good job of painting the I'm colorful sorry. picture no. that he really, can you hear me? Yeah, but I don't, I don't think that's the same line. You don't think that is? He walked away. He went back fishing. I, no, I don't think it's the same line, personally. Like, okay. I, I Jesus, look at what Jesus he reality. Yeah. Right. Okay. He, comes, he was coming okay. out of a fear state of mind, not a, he was coming out of a fear state I, of mind, not a state of mind. Okay, well, let me say this. I think it's a good thing that we really don't know saying. people who have, committed this sin like we already <laughs> kind of talked about this. it's a really really good thing yeah what about judas? but it is real i think judas, I think judas oh. is an example judas mm. Mm. i mean he walked with christ he saw the miracles Yo, i was gonna say i was gonna say judas too that's who i was thinking too uh, come on come on pull that out a little bit more let me hear about judas no, I'm just saying at some point he walked with them. He was there. He saw the miracles. He, he witnessed them. He saw people being healed, limbs, so people, Lazarus being raised from the dead, all of this. So he had to know at some point that it was real. And at some point he became defiled mentally and, and withdrew from it and decided, nope, mm-mm. I, I'm going to reject this. Which is why it says, you know, he was sorrowful afterwards and he killed himself, but you know, I, I'm, it's not to say, I mean, I don't know. I just think that's probably the closest example that I can think of that, that you know, in the Bible. But Was Judas a fulfillment? Right was it, was, was Judas, Judas a fulfillment of Scripture? He was, but it, it, it still, <laughs> still happens. Yeah. Hmm. And I know, yeah. I know that we had talked about this with Judas before when we were, t- I can't remember what chapter we were talking about this with, but, you know, we were talking about the fact that Jesus knew that he was his, his betrayer, and yet he still, you know, kept giving him a chance because he wanted him to have an opportunity. But I, I think he's about the closest that we have to reprobate mine. Yeah. Well, and, I'll give you a better example. The Pharisees and the Sadducees that accused Jesus of doing oh. what he did by the power of the devil, they were in society and not giving proper regard to the Holy Ghost. They were blasphemous. Yeah. What do you say? Right there, the chapter, they they right there in the chapter, chapter we studied. Yeah, the chapter we in. I mean, he was talking the to them. 
sorry, say it again. No, I said the chapter we're in, I mean, everything is tied, you know, the chapter 30, I mean, verse 30 on is connecting to everything else that he had already addressed with the Pharisees and Sadducees. Yes. Let me read one more thing, Romans one <laughs> twenty one through a few. Because of that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. Their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise. Sounds like Pharisees, Sadducees, Herodians, and scribes to me. They became fools and mm-hmm. changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image. We with Moses, we with Abraham, changed into a corruptible God, uh, the, inc- the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and to birds and forth with the beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness to us of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. He gave them up. Mm-hmm. Gave them up to uncleanness. Uh, oh. I'm looking for the word. I guess the word reprobate is not in there, but that's the, the area where you know, I would expect to see the word reprobate. But, and that's the version. but you know what, though? Um, it's so interesting that Dad was talking about the Pharisees. It, right under we going all around the uh, mulberry bush, and it's right here in the chapter we're looking at. And all of the other examples were, were very key, too. But just when he, he said this, the Pharisees heard it and said, this man, talking about Jesus, cast out demons only by the help of Satan, the prince of demons, or Beelzebub. And, you know, and, and, and Jesus tackled that, rebuked them, and I thought it was kind of interesting when he said, you know, like, duh, like, if Satan cast out Satan, he, you know, be, he become divided against himself and disunited. How will his kingdom stand? What I look like working in cahoots with Satan? Like, I'm casting out demons. But he, he puts demons on people. It's the same lie that people buy into when they can't receive their healing. Oh, the Lord put this on me, so I'm just going to walk this on out. Really? Then why are he running through the gospel healing people then? If that's right. what he wants you to have. And I know it may seem really simplistic, but I tell you, people get, their mind get jigsaw puzzled around this. It's, the Lord is. did not put that on you. Huh. Here it is, too. Here's the verse, 128, Romans 1. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, your philosophy, Jesus, your theology, Jesus, doesn't fit with our theology. We don't want to retain you in our knowledge and our system. It doesn't fit. God gave them over to a reprobate mind of things which are not convenient. So, again, these are people who take initiative, who make, who make decisions about how they're going to side relative to righteousness. Will we receive Jesus? We'll receive him as a vehicle by which the Holy Ghost is, is working. And you know what? I don't even think that they, Jesus went deeper on them. You know, you think you're attacking me, and what you really is attacking the Holy Ghost. You're doing it indirectly because you didn't say that, you know, the Holy Ghost is not involved, the Spirit of God is not involved in this. But you say, but you, you, you attack me. And in attacking me and defining what I'm doing, you define it wrong, and you, and you insult it, and you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. And, you know, I, what that, I, one of the things that comes to my mind is this. I need to be religiously careful not to be too religious. You know, I need to be careful about the constructs I build, you know, the do's, the don'ts, don't do this, disqualifies you, just, or for that matter, judging people. You know, you ain't saved. You, because uh, I, I come from a religious, uh, a religious experience in, uh, in, the, in the past where that seemed to be the major ambition, where people were just mm. judging folk who say, who not say, so on and so forth. And, uh, and when you get so tight with the constructs you make, and here is some truth that's right here that's, that's that's speaking to you by the Holy Ghost, and you can't receive it, you won't receive it, and then you create something to make sure you prove yourself. You you, you got to be careful because you may be uh, you know fringing on the board on the on the on the edges on the on the on the fence of, of being a blasphemous individual who, who will not receive the truth of what God is doing by the Spirit because it don't fit your religious construct. Mm. This is you know actually, we. Uh, right into chapter 13, not that I'm going to jump ahead, but I do want to point out in verse 15 of chapter 13 where it talks about they closed their own eyes. Mm-hmm. And their mm-hmm. they made a decision to not receive and not believe, even though they knew the truth. So just wanted to point that out. That's good. Yeah, I think that that puts a nice little knot on that or a bow on that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if someone has anything else in um, Chapter 12 that um, they wanted to just touch on. 
Um, I did. Uh huh. I did. It's at the oh, wait, end. Wait, 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 wait. Before, before, before you get off this subject, you know, okay. why did Jesus put so much on on honoring the Holy Ghost like that? I mean. I appreciate you being humble, Jesus, the servant, and serving everybody and fasting 40 days and defeating the devil and coming and going to die for us, okay? But why is it that nobody can be forgiven for their, um, their disrespect of the Holy Ghost like that? Why is that, Jesus? I mean, I don't know. Help me with that a little bit. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, I would, when you asked that question, I was thinking that the Holy Spirit is with us. I mean, uh, as modern day New Testament believers, that is that is how we acknowledge God. I mean, we have His Word, but you know, the reality reality that we have Holy Ghost living on the inside of us, and to say and have had an experience, and then to say, ah, uh, it is not existent. I think it has something to do with knowing that that is the gift. That is the gift that Jesus left us with. That is the power that God gave us on the earth is Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. It, it also, you know, God? if you see, what about hello? God? Oh, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead, go ahead, Sherry, and I'll go after you. I was going to say, what about this? Was, the Holy Spirit is the comforter and brings mm-hmm. understanding. Mm-hmm. So how dare you disrespect the your one, knowledge? Right. That, that mm-hmm. gives you what enables you to get understanding. How Mm -hmm. dare you do that? It almost is like sitting in the face of there's no one on the earth that I could compare it to, but it's it's like this just sitting in the face of what has been given to us, as Donisha said, as the gift, but it's also it's the power you know, it's the God-given power, and you're basically spitting in that type of that type of comfort, that type of understanding. You're you're it's all it's so disrespectful. It's just like it's terribleness. <laughs> so it's not you, you know. Between, it also it's not a dispute between two friends. We just have a misunderstanding. I just I may have said something in Holy Ghost, and you know, I mean, but but I guess I guess part of that I'm answering my own question because. A blasphemy says an individual, like you said, takes a position, an initiative, and they know it better, Mm -hmm. and and they really Mm -hmm. oppose. Mm -hmm. You know, what's also coming to my head is this. It's what God is doing in the earth now. Mm -hmm. And it's how he's doing it. You know, I also, I look at. My Holy Ghost. And so you're disrespecting God, period. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like that. I'm going to do what I want to do, and I know what's right, and I don't care, so I'm going to spit in your face because I, I, don't, I choose to do completely opposite of what you're doing, even though I know good and well that this is the truth. Yeah. You know, Lifestyle. It's, it's awful. It's, it's an awful thought, it, and it's one situation that comes to my brain of this, like a personal situation that comes to my brain, like you deliberately walk into the church doors with, you know, another woman and you're married to another woman and like nobody in the church does something like you're sitting in God's face and you know you're yeah. doing it and you don't care. That's how it is like that. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Well, the measure of it is, it, it measures that, that, uh, that wrong, okay, the wrong scale. That it measures, it, it's it's obvious. It's obvious that that's that, that's uh, opposing opposing the things that ought to be. Yeah, All right, I think it's I'm that level. It. I'm done with it. I'm sorry. It's that level. I just the more ugly you can paint, it, it's that probably time C. <laughs> I think Jill, so. I think it can be passion. more simplified. Hey, I agree I'm with just you. saying. <laughs> I think sometimes, as Siobhan, I think I hit on earlier, sometimes people are just hurt, and in their hurt, they reject God because they don't understand and they think that God is the cause of their hurt. Mm-hmm. And Jesus is the one that came to heal the brokenhearted. And, you know, a part of us being fragile as human beings and even being susceptible to pain and hurt is to show us that yeah, is to actually draw us closer to God, the one who can heal us, who can heal our broken heart, and who can mend us. 
you know, and, and to show us that, you know, we're weak apart from him. But instead, people get hurt and they become callous and they reject God. Yeah, so and I think, I think that's you know, a, um, I know, Siobhan, you had a question or something else to throw out there, but I think that that's a, a great point to pull out, um, especially for, for those that might be listening, because, I, you know, I know that there are people that have blamed God um, for put maybe deaths in their family or why, why did God take away my family member or why did God allow this to happen to me? And all they know and they just resort to, you know, anger with God. And, and I, I agree, Regina, I think that that's how some of this turning away of Holy Ghost happens as well. And, you know, for us to clarify that God... God is love, and God can't be love and hate. Um, and there is a presence well, of... Uh-huh. How much of this, like the topic that we're on right now, where people experience hurts and all that stuff, how much of this is really just lack of understanding, lack of can be. faith mm-hmm. versus deliberate, I know the truth? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think... I, I look at this as, like, two distinctive lines. Like, I get people can turn away from God because they're hurt and they don't have an understanding. And mm-hmm. that comes from immaturity. Immaturity mm-hmm. in Christ. Or lack of teaching. Of, or yeah, teaching. yeah, or lack of teaching, you know. Mm-hmm. I, and I, okay, so there, I think that's, that these people, and, you know, you could fall into a, a, a or you weak-minded or what have you, and the enemy can step in and, and you know, you, you, you in this place, and you denounce God because you don't have an understanding or you haven't been taught properly or what have you. But then I think this category that deals with this blasphemy and reprobate mind is you know. You know. There's right. no confusion. Mm-hmm. There, I, I think that people get upset. They get hurt. Why, God? Why me? I mean, I've even said Lord to the Lord, you, you sure enough have to have a plan that I don't have a clue about because I don't understand why I keep getting attacked in my body. But I don't blame God because I have faith. I know that there's a plan for it. I know that the reason I'm going through it is because I can handle it. I know that the reason I'm going through it is because there's a testimony on the other side of it. I know that the reason I'm going through it is because I can handle it and mm-hmm. somebody else can. Hallelujah. And so mm-hmm. with that but said, not everybody can you know, faith, though. Not, if, not right. everybody is strong. Like, not everybody grew up in the Word. And, and even people who don't have never received Christ, but obviously God wants to receive them, they get hurt, too, and it's like, okay, you don't have a relationship with Christ or with God, and then all of a sudden you get hurt, and all of a sudden you're aware of God, and it's like, oh, you're blaming God. But it's just, you know, it's, it actually alludes to it in chapter 12 in verse um, 20 where it says, A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. And that's really, I think, referring to the condition of of human's frailty, like our ability to be weak and to need a savior. And it's like when you are not, when you are almost hopeless and all you have is not even a flame, but like if you picture a candle and the wick, you know, it's not a flame there, but it's like slightly, I don't know, you can see embers or something within the wick, but there's no actual flame. And and it's about to go out and it says that a smoke and flash, he will not, um, a smoking flask you will not quench and it's like whatever little bit of hope whatever little bit of faith you have you might be bruised and broken but God understands where you are and there's grace and mercy for where you are it's just that people don't get to the point of receiving it and so instead at that point of weakness instead Satan comes in as we'll talk about in chapter 13 where he comes to steal the word Satan will come in and try to seal the deal and put that little bit of flicker of flame you have out and try and destroy you at your weakest point. And so, and try to get you to be blind in the way. So I think sometimes, you know, everybody is not as strong and everybody can't say, oh, well, I know the word and so I know how God is. That's not everybody's testimony. But I, I do believe I do believe God looks upon a heart. And so I, I understand the distinction that you're making, Sherry. And I, 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 I believe that the Lord looks upon the heart of men, and I, you know, hurt does cause us to to be disappointed. 
Um, but I don't, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a, you know, a final position that that person is taking. Mm-mm. So, no, yeah. I, I, I don't agree either. I mean, we kind of read where Paul even said, you know, you, I obtained mercy. You know, I, I was in ignorance mm-hmm. in the things that I was doing, meaning I lacked knowledge. I lacked understanding. Like, I mean, even with, and Paul, uh, was a pretty strong-willed person. I mean, obviously, he was Saul at first. He's pretty strong-willed. Mm-hmm. And he was just as passionate on fire against the things of God, and he thought he was doing it for the, for the Lord. But no, he wasn't. Mm-hmm. And he was, he was actually coming up against Jesus. He was kicking up against him. And the Lord had to, you know, come on in and, and make a correction in that. There was a way that was made to do that. But um, I think that we, that's why it's so important for us to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit when you're dealing with people who are um, blinded. They have uh, been sitting under poor teaching um, or have been um, receiving erroneous information regarding the gospel, regarding Jesus. There has to be patience. There has to be love. There has to be a lot of um, making up the hedge and intercession for people. Um, though specifically praying that the blinders be removed from our eyes. I mentioned deception earlier regarding that one minister. I don't believe he's so far gone where he can't be pulled back into the things of God. I don't believe that at all. We have loved ones who we've been standing and believing God for to come back into the full knowledge of the truth regarding Jesus. And I don't believe those things fall on deaf ears. I just believe that we there's there's people who sow the seed and there's people that come across in water. I believe there's someone or a situation that's going to happen where that line is drawn right there in the sand where, yeah, what am I doing over here? I've gone back fishing, and I thought that I made the unpardonable sin or I've, oh, this is it. God's mad with me, and that's not the case at all. He loves us. And I do. So I want to. I want to say that to who, whomever may be listening, that um, you know, you may have gotten angry or may have been disappointed with God and the things that may have happened, and and you want answers or you don't understand. And I I just encourage you to talk to the Lord about it. Have a real conversation, just like we're talking tonight. And, and and give the care of it over to God. And I, I do yeah. believe that Saul to Paul experiences still happen today for people. Yeah. And um, if if your heart is open to have more understanding of whatever that situation is and, and more understanding of God, and, and there's an invitation to come in, he, he will come in. And so... Just want to encourage uh, the listeners that um, you know hurt and disappointment may come, but um, God loves us and, and God does want the best best life possible or the best life that He's already preordained and planned for you to have. So, just wanted to put that out there. Um, I know that we are uh, at our time, over our time at this point. And uh, I think, Siobhan, you're going to close out in prayer. But I just want to thank you all for for being with us tonight. And just know that God loves you unconditionally. Um, He's not holding something over your head. Um, He is a loving God and a forgiving God. And um, just have a real talk with him if if you need to do that. Amen. Are there any other prayer requests? I know there was Tommy. There was um, keeping Luca's health lifted and um, Sherry's health lifted. Um, is there any other pr- are there any other prayer requests? This is Deborah. I have an appointment on Wednesday. Keep me up in prayer. I'm sorry, uh, Deborah. Can you repeat that again? I have an appointment on Wednesday. Can you keep me up in prayer? Yes, ma'am. And I just received another prayer request. Um, Javon, you can go okay, ahead. Okay, I'm gonna. And, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Y'all can go ahead and put the angels on the surgery tomorrow. Okay, I I was trying to. Uh, I wasn't sure how much you wanted to divulge, Sherry. But yeah, I wanna. Uh, Sherry's gonna be going in for surgery tomorrow, and uh, we're here in support, uh, prayerfully and in the uh, physical. 
sense, and so we just want to make sure that, uh, you know, there, everything goes smooth. Um, Amen. I, I do have a little mini praise report. Um, we were praying for baby Samantha's um, assist by her eye, and it has been shrinking in size. She's Amen. supposed to go into, it's, a, it's like a, basically a newborn baby. She's supposed to be going into surgery in September, but we've been praying, and that cyst has been shrinking. So we're believing God to totally, uh, that for it to totally vanish and decimate. So uh, is, I got another text message about someone's uh, family. Uh, they experienced a death, and we want to just um, pray comfort over them. Um, do I have everything? think so i think you got everything okay okay um oh so oh yeah i I need to lift myself up i had an allergic reaction yesterday it was terrible it's awful i'm still kind of dealing with it today um and uh i could definitely uh just use the agreement the prayer of agreement today uh regarding that thing sometimes we forget about ourselves when we're praying but um i appreciate you reminding me mom so uh, let's just kind of go before the Father. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Lord, thank you for the opportunity to come together once again. There was such liberty in being able to study your word tonight, Father. We love you so much, and we just thank you for um, this word. It is life. It is health to us. It is um, a light on our pathway, Father God. I just thank you, Lord, for each and every moderator, each and every person listening live and those who are listening to the replay. We call them blessed, Father. We say that this word is deposited amongst good ground, and it is not snatched up by the enemy. But this word, Father God, they're grabbing hold to it. They are receiving it. They are meditating on it. It is a yes and it is an amen word for them, Lord, that they are able to receive receive, Father God, from Jesus now, not in the sweet by and by, that they know that, hey, 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, that you are a faithful God, you are a just God, and that you're able to cleanse, purify us from all unrighteousness. You view us as Jesus. You view us in Christ. You view us in righteousness, in right standing with you, not in wrong, but in right. And that is the power of knowing who Christ is, that we're able to come into covenant with you through his shed blood. It is that vital. It is that important. That is the covering in the shield that comes with being a part of the family of Christ. And I just thank you, Father God, that people are crying out to you. And it, you are not a God where it falls upon deaf ears, but you are active and in motion. You hear and you're even working in and through us, this collection of believers. And so we send this word out, Father, and it does not return to us void, but it is full of power, and it attaches itself, Father God, to sickness and disease, breaking it up. We speak against fibroid tumors right now in the name of Jesus. We spit on cancer in the name of Jesus. We spit on allergic reactions. We take authority against every sickness and disease, every attack. We say, Father, that you are with baby Luca. I thank you that he receives relief and comfort right now, Father, that his body, Father God, is whole, Father. I just thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're touching his young body. You're touching Tommy right now, Father God, that you're calibrating his heart Father, that you are guiding the physicians and the nurses, Father. They are attentive to his care. Lord, I just lift up my sister Sherry, and I stand and make up the hedge against the attacks on her body. I bind lupus in the name of Jesus. I curse back every sickness and disease. Every attack of the enemy does not, does not win. We have the victory. And I just thank you, Father God, that she's been able to stand, and that people are have been looking at her walk and that they've been coming after Christ because she's been walking strong and the things that have been coming against her. Oh, but there's a turn. There's a turn of events. And I thank you for the breakthrough, Father God. I thank you for your healing favor across her life right now. And I thank you that the hand of the enemy is cut off. 
Lord, you are already in that surgical room. You are already causing the miraculous to go down before whoever needs to see it. I thank you that her life is being used mightily, Father, to bring you glory. And I say, Father God, that it is a smooth procedure, that there's a speedy recovery, Father. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that her body bounces back, that her uterus is preserved, Father. I say, Father, that she's bringing forth healthy children, Father. You have already set this thing in order for her to be blessed, and we stand in agreement with that. Father, I say that Deborah is whole from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. I curse cancer, Father. I say, Father God, that it is eradicated from her member. I spit on Satan's attempt to try to wipe her out. It does not work. I say, Father God, that you are blessing Deborah. I say that there is a powerful testimony, and you are walking with her through this. And on the other side, Father, I say she doesn't even smell like what she went through, that she is a bold minister of the gospel, Father. You are equipping her. Father, I thank you that she has a healing ministry already lined up and you're walking this thing on out. I thank you, Father God, for all the things that you're doing. I speak life over Ashley Perry's family, Father, and I say right now, Father God, that you are blessing her entire home, that the devil cannot enter in and cause confusion and cause deception, but they are drawing closer to you. They are, you're wrapping your loving arms around this family, Father, and that, Lord Jesus, you're turning that the tears, you see it, and that it's, it's turning into beauty, Father God, for ashes. I say, Father God, that your name is, uh, is set apart in this family, that they shall know you, Father God, as Savior and salvation. I thank you, Father God, for all of these things. I say, Father, that people will cry out to you and know that they can confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart. We talked about the heart tonight, that there is a deliberate decision that's being made. There's a resolve. There's a once and for all that's happening even tonight, Father, for Jesus. And I thank you, Father God, that their life, Father God, shall never be the same, that they shall grow, Father God, in wisdom, that they shall grow, Father God, in stature in the word of God. And I say, Father, that you are blessing this study, that you are blessing the collection of believers that are attentive to what it is that Holy Spirit has to say now. And I thank you, Father God, that as we continue to study your ways, Jesus, that with boldness we're able to go out without fear, but in power to minister your gospel. And people have ears to hear, they have eyes to see, for those blinders are already yet removed. Lord, we are sensitive to however your word want to use us. And I thank you, Father God, all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you all. Again, if you want to hear the um, rebroadcast, you can go to Spreaker.com and just do search Expresso Faith in the search box and you will uh, pull up all of our previous um, lessons. We love you. We thank God for you and uh, look forward to the testimonies next week. Have a wonderful Bernice, week. And, yeah, uh huh. I just want to make one last comment. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I know we're done, but um, Satan, there are lots of uh, testimonies of people who have been high ranking um, satanic worshipers who have turned their life over to Christ. And if there's anybody mm. listening and something that you're dealing with, it is not the unpardonable sin. That is something that you can be delivered from. Amen. You go worship God, be saved, and go to heaven. That is not the unpardonable sin. So I just wanted to point that out. The unpardonable sin is very specific. It's blaspheming the Holy Ghost. And I just, I just, that's it. Amen. It's out Amen. There. Amen. 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 God bless that is you all. Thanks, thanks for that, Regina. All right, all right, good night. Good night. Love you all. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye.